some, get some, bad enough, take some. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 31 of Banging and Banging with Gang Grill. And, uh, well, Kid Cadet's not here. She's, uh, I, I think she had a busy night. She was, uh, I don't know if you guys watched it, the Fox. Fox, was it Fox Raymond? Uh, yeah, at 8 p.m. Uh, Fox at 8 p.m. She was on, um, I Can See Your Voice. What was it called? Yeah, I See Your Voice. I See Your Voice. I See Your Voice, which was, uh, it was a pretty cool show. I fast forward through it to all her highlights and stuff like that, but I want to say congratulations to her. Um Thank you. She was down in the finale. Uh, the lady picked her to... The show is a... Uh, I wish she was here to explain it, but I'm sure she'll talk about it next week, so I won't go into too much detail today. I'd rather her explain it in her words and stuff like that. But um, basically, you, you you had four judges and you had one contestant, and she had to eliminate the people that... like These 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 secret voices, you didn't know if they could sing or, 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 or if they were great singers or they couldn't sing at all. Or they, or they sang a lot like me, um, not not very well. And uh, you had to guess, and they had different video packages, and they did some lip syncing, and there was different things in the process of elimination. So the the lady, the contestant, she had to eliminate the bad wrestler. She got fifteen thousand dollars, but if she picked the uh, the wrestler, uh, not the wrestler, the singers, the singers, I'm sorry, singers, eliminate the bad singers. She got fifteen. It was like little bonus things, but she had to go through a process, and and hopefully there's one person left standing. And whether that person was a bad singer or a good voice or a bad voice, you don't know if she could actually sing or not. And it came down to ours, banging the bang with gang ground, kick cadet. It came down to kick cadet, otherwise known as the wrestling announcer on that show, or Heather Richter, her real name. Um, I came down to her, and uh, she went on, and she's uh, Jewel. Everybody knows Jewel. Uh, she the Jewel started singing and everything, and then sure enough, kick cadet. Had a golden vocal cords come out. She could sing. The lady won a hundred thousand um, dollars. I like to say, little bow wow. He definitely supported her all the way through. You oh, know, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's not little bow wow anymore. What? Oh, bow wow. Yeah, he took the little off. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a, a podcast called The Trap that, that talks about <laughs> rap music. Apparently, I was informed today. I know nothing about rap music or, or current rap or anything else. And he's probably no. right. So, <laughs> if it isn't the Sugar Hill Gang or Slick Rick and and whatnot and King Mo D or whatever, <laughs> I was I was surprised you knew Kodak. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he's Floyd Deerfield Pompano. I didn't think he. You know oh, how can you not know him down at Ariba World and all that stuff that went down? <laughs> hey. Oh, that was no, that was Triple X. That's you may know something I don't know. The Triple X, no, when Triple X got caught, caught down there on, in Pompano. Remember when he got shot down there and they killed him? XXX, yeah, yeah, yeah XXX. Yeah. X-X. He's Tantino. another like Deerfield Pompano guy. Right? You knew him too? Yeah. Even I didn't even know. Yeah. At the time, I didn't <laughs> really. I wasn't familiar with him like that. Come on, man! I got all these young bloods at the wrestling school trying to turn me on and stuff, and I'll be like, "What? That ain't that ain't rap. That ain't music." And they come at me with some auto tune stuff and like like oh like what? What was it like? Oh armadillo. <laughs> okay, okay. So you talk about our auto tune, but I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Roger from the eighties. Hmm. Roger from uh uh oh, I, I, I wanna be a man. That uh, auto tune robotic voice. Like I thought you were talking about Roger and Rerun from <laughs> what's that you don't even know what that show is, do you? No, I don't. Never mind. Ah, right, forget it, man. Whatever. Congratulations to Kid Cadet. Yep. Uh, she was picked to have the voice, and she did have the voice, and she sang a duet with Jewel and uh, Bow Wow, Sir Bow Wow. He believed in her and pushed her all the way through. Uh, the other dude did too, uh, whatever his name is, Cheyenne something. Um, and also, what's the girl from uh, Adrian from um, The View and Cheetah Girls? Adrian. Oh, so it's Cheetah Girls and The View. Okay. Well, she's popular from the Cheetah Girls. Yeah, yeah. I recognize her from The View, but I, I didn't watch Cheetah Girls like you, Raymond. <laughs> like, no, I just... Yeah. <laughs> like, Who's on the TV? Cheetah Girls, something like the Spice Girls? Uh, they're way better in my opinion. Oh, way better than Scary Spice and Posh Spice and Ginger Spice. Yeah, yeah I got the Spice Girls. Nah, I missed one. Um, but Which one? Scary Spice. Or did I say Scary Spice? I just seen the scary movie. Spice I didn't know they were a real group. I just thought they were just a movie. Spice Girls? Yeah, you don't remember the movie? Yeah, but they're a real group. They're yeah. over. They're over in the UK, big time. They're over here. They were. They were very popular. Come on, Raymond. Uh, but um, Bow Wow supported her the most. He gave her a lot of love. And then there was this one girl, Cheryl uh, <laughs> Cheryl Hines or something. <laughs> to give it, get a real I, name. I don't know. She looked like she needs to eat a little bit. She's a little thin there. Um, but yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, I, I think she was the only one doubted. But I, I think their jobs are like somebody's got to be the heel. 
heel, I think, or because all the others were saying, no, she looks like a singer, because she did. She had a lot of charisma. The same old kid kid that we know with all the nice hand movements in the hair and, I think and all that. I think it's something, something similar to what you say all the time, that you see everything in black and white. If you see everything in black and white, you know everything in life. There's a yin and a yang. Yeah. yeah. Sports, TV, yeah. politics. It's always a good and a bad. Why are you always throwing politics in there? You, you just you, dabbled it in. Just yeah, and next thing you know, you're going to go with some conspiracy theories. But yes, yeah, like, you, yeah, probably even like, say, uh, Bow Wow and all that, or myself, or anybody that's been around the entertainment industries or different on different levels, pro wrestling or musicians, this and that, you do see a black and white. You don't really see a gray area. Um, I think the gray area are... are for, for the fans and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> they leave a lot of room for, for their thoughts and opinions and their hopes and ambitions, you know, of, of their favorite entertainer and stuff like that. But congratulations, kick at that. Um, so what did I've done? What, what's gone on uh, here, Raymond, since uh, I mean, you I've got seen you last? So happy New Year's to everybody. Uh, I think this is the first podcast of the new year, correct? Yes. All right. Yes, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I've gained 25 pounds. I, I officially, uh, Anna moved out. Miss Anna Blanca Diaz, ABD. Uh, she moved out, so she left her scale. And I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, because now I constantly go in there and stand on that scale every morning in what used to be her bathroom. Well, it's still her bathroom. She's always welcome to come back. But she, I want to wish her luck on her journey out there and uh, trying to find herself in the world and spread her wings and fly. Her mom is really sad. It's driving me crazy. But we're getting married uh, in a month here. So. Can't wait. Oh, crap. You know, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble on here. Just, got butterflies? Did the government watch this show? No, no butterflies. Bats. Of course, of course they Bats. <laughs> Did the government watch this show? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, you think Especially so? now with me being on Because I, I, I don't know, man. Um, went to the courthouse yesterday morning. And, uh, I, yeah, to get this the, the, the marriage license or apply for the marriage license. And uh, I, I wasn't prepared. They asked me, have you ever been married before? Yes. Uh, what, what was your date of your divorce? And like, ah. So so quickly, uh, they, I, I, Susan knew her date and everything, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, it's like 2013 or something. So, so what do I do? That lady goes, well, you can't be lying, and she gave me this whole bureaucratic <laughs> speech. You lie, it's gonna come back on your uh, taxes and and this and this and that, and had me so sketched and paranoid. I just said, yeah, I don't know it. Like she says, well. You need to go out there in the hallway and figure it out. Like, we had an appointment, so I'll get scolded. I feel bad for Susan because she was all six feet up. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So she is on it. She knew the, her divorce date. So I'm going to go out in the hallway. And what do I go by? Google. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and I know nothing's right on Wikipedia. Nothing is right on Wikipedia oh, about me. Nothing. No, and I know that, but all, all the same reports said 2013, 2013. So I said, well... My gosh, I think it's like August 14, 2013. That. So that's what I went in there and I swore to. Put my right hand up and swore to it. And three hours later, I get a call from, because uh, uh, I had called her, like, but she's a, um, the, the girl I was married to. I had called her in uh, California or I left a message, text her. But, you know, it was like, it was eight in the morning at the courthouse. So it was like five in the morning in California. So I know she ain't going to be up. She's a night owl, anyways. And um, But three hours later, after I get home, I get one. She goes, yeah, it was 11, 27, 14. It was Thanksgiving Day. Don't you remember? I felt bad about that. I'm like, I'm like, oh, damn, man. I was off by almost a year. <laughs> like, okay. And it was a holiday. I can't remember getting, yeah, females getting divorced forget. on a holiday, like a Thanksgiving like that. Female mm-hmm. will never forget. No, nah, they don't forget. I guess not. Like, Susan remembered her date, and I, and she remembered that date. So I, I guess they were just happy to get the hell out of their relationships. <laughs> like, but I was all right, too. I was good with getting out of it. But... uh. I just couldn't remember the date. So lesson learned. You know, I always preach, don't go to Wikipedia. Everything's wrong from, from my height to how many. To, they don't even have the right per. I, why would I even go buy it? They had me married to somebody named Cheryl. My mom's name was Cheryl. It was, <laughs> they had me married to somebody named Cheryl Richards, who I have no earthly idea is. You know, I, when I've only been married. It's just everything's wrong on Wikipedia. And, and uh, so uh, Corey Haim, you know, Corey, uh, Corey Feldman, Corey Feldman, you know, Corey Feldman. No. Oh, you like Corey Feldman because he has a lot of conspiracy theories like you, you know. Um, I'm not a conspiracy The License theory. to Drive, The Lost Boys, The Frog Brothers, um, nope. uh, The Goonies. Uh, nope. I know of the Goonies because uh, you you every week. But look, I probably... Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to understand, as a kid, there is no internet or 
whatever comes on the TV, you watch it, and you never know the name. Man, the Goonies, there was no internet or anything. I'm, when, I'm, watch the Goonies. when I'm saying a lot of the movies you, you you say, I probably watched, but I don't know the name of it because I watched it as a kid, and it's just like, we the, don't see the, the name The Goonies of it. tied into wrestling a whole lot with Cindy Lauper and, 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 and all that. Uh, if I see the movie, I'll remember it, but by the names, I'm, it's impossible. Right? Okay. Uh, trying to think of some other stuff he does. He's probably made more money as a musician than he did in his uh probably the acting because back when you were kids then you know they were they would get paid thirty thousand dollars for a feature role where today would be like two hundred thousand dollars or even a million you know um but no no he has it you know he he, um, he did a whole documentary on like I think like about pedophiles and all this kind of stuff that's why I thought maybe you'd know about him and in his life and his real story and then somebody hacked his account apparently and um re did the format almost the same as his and then released theirs and he got i, I don't know it's a that he's a yeah, wikipedia everything the, the whole media blackout he's a he's got a whole conspiracy theory on that but um i know that uh i've had people try to change my wikipedia for me and they've gotten blocked they've gotten like a, a year banned or something like that and they're like trying to put the actual facts so whoever's out there running these things are insane and how yeah. to get away with it somebody who has heat with you heat with me who do i have heat with it's not about you having heat with them. People are vindictive. They yes, I am. Been around almost fifty three years on this. Yeah, so somehow, probably pissed somebody off here or there. A person like you, like me, what, what? a person like you, a, a nice person who who trucks through life, no matter what's thrown at you, you always come out on top some way somehow, <laughs> and you don't conform to the status quo. Uh, that, that upsets people. Well, I have, I, I have formed because I got, I have gotten two shots and a booster. You thank your mom for helping hey, me get that orchestrated, that's... jumping that line. <laughs> I jumped that whole line and got a whole booster shot last Tuesday after the podcast. <laughs> the whole world was dropping down with the Omicron or Omatron or whatever it's called. I got some like, new one out now. And I, what? Yeah, it's a new one. Is a new? I new, forgot what it's called. A new it, variant of COVID out. Yeah. Okay. What's it? What make your toe hurt or something? <laughs> I mean, is it called the flu? <laughs> like, they recycled it back to the flu. I, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not joking on a lighting matter, but like it started to get ridiculous yeah, at some point. But um, speaking of health and oh um, uh, yeah, whatnot. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, Raymond. You asked me how my back was doing when I came in here. You did a little jump. Kick. I, I, I did a little icky shuffle or something. I don't know what, whatever it was. A little miniature jump kick. It still hurt very much, but but uh, very John Morrison like. Uh, no, uh, John <laughs> Morrison, he's awesome, dude. I don't know why they let him go. I mean, where's he at now? What's he doing? But, I don't know, man. I'm yeah, I'm upset about that. Oh, stuff. A little drip drip or whatever he was called. I, I don't know about all that, but John Morrison's like. Truly athletic guy. It looks amazing. But uh, so the, the uh, I want to say thank you to AJ uh, Caprio and his pops and uh, also Andrew Anderson for hooking it up at uh, Integrated uh, Pain Management in, in New Rutherford, New Jersey. Like that's where I got the, the stem cell. It was a Prodigy stem cell. Um, I had three epidurals in three months and couldn't, couldn't walk, barely still couldn't walk or stand up straight. Two weeks ago, as of yesterday, two weeks ago, uh, Two weeks, um, I had the stem cell I'll put in my back and stuff like that. And um, man, uh, I, who would have believed it? But boom, I'm not still still not standing up totally straight, but I'm walking uh, without pain in my back. Now I, I can't go running the ropes and stuff like that at the ring. I tried to stride it out a little bit. And I still feel a lot of discomfort and everything. But in two weeks, amazingly, I improved in two weeks more on one stem cell shot. And I did in three weeks with three epidurals, masking things, doing PT and everything else. So um, got some high hopes on there. So I want to thank that whole crew, AJ and his pops and everybody at Integrated Pain Management in Rutherford, New Jersey, and, uh, for using that Prodigy stem cells. Ah! So I was, I was thinking about hanging it up, but now I'm going, ah, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. But I got to weigh it out. Do I want to, uh, is this going to be my last year or not? I'm going to tell you this. I can honestly say this will be my last year. Um, at what point in this year did I hang it up? I don't know. I have people trying to book me through October already. Um, back over in the UK. Um, and I go to Dubai. We've already talked about that. Romania. Uh, I'm excited for your, your Dubai show. Dubai is good. Uh, that's going to happen. Uh, I've been to Dubai. Like I said, I've wrestled 30 straight days in Dubai. They built. A, they have a shopping festival. Every, like They had it every year. I don't know with all the COVID and stuff how they've had it in the last few years. But... 
Um, I went over there in Dubai. You fly in and, and you literally wrestle 30 nights in the same venue. So it was a big giant field. They just built walls, built like a, a, a walls, big four giant square walls. Um, the tra- uh, the dressing rooms are trailers on the backside of one of the walls. But it, inside it was arenas with bleachers and stands like that. And they sold it out. And, and uh, 30 straight nights, 30 shows, 30 shows wrestling the buy so i spent uh spent a good month there you know it's a great oh. city had a great time okay when when you're doing something like that is every match the same or, or like how do you switch it up each no time? there's the, the tournaments i think i won the uh iron man uh i won the iron man tournament so like you know two weeks of it you know some of you were in brackets and tournament tournaments okay. and then um okay. a tournament and then uh, sometimes you'll be in a random tag or a six man if you've been eliminated out of the tournament, moved on. But I moved on through the tournaments so and like the that one, and I won the Iron Man, the Iron Man tournament. So hey, basically, it'll, that'll get people to purchase tickets for more than one night if it's a tournament. They, yeah, they come in, but it, it's so many people are coming in and out. It's not even the same people every night because people are coming in for just one week of this festival, or because mm. uh, well, it's a thirty day festival. Like, and um, so that was cool. But this here is just a. Uh, one show, and I believe it's at the Coca Cola Arena, and like, I believe Braun Strowman's on it. Uh, RVD's back. Uh, stem Cell, I believe RVD's back because I think he retired, and I think he started doing Stem Cell. I, I could be wrong, and that he he feels so good, he's back wrestling again. Or it could be the money's so good in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, it's um, you know, it, it's like uh. Everybody joking about the crown jewel and stuff like like the buy is probably like the crown jewel of the independence, you know. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Gonna go over there, you can't pass up the, you know. But but uh, uh, it's gonna be fun. Frank Collins uh, got a, a handle on it. He's one of the old, old older um, old school guys from from England and stuff like that. Uh, I think it was Chick Collins. But uh, that was gonna be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. And uh, I'm only going over there for the one, one show, but it'll be three shows throughout. Throughout this year, so oh, they get so, so it's uh, uh March, uh, maybe May, I think, or something. September, or March, June, September, something like that. It's spread out through the years. And so. you're on, you're on all three shows. Supposed to be, I got a contract for it. So oh yeah. man! So before this COVID thing started, when was the last time you actually did a show out, out of the country? Uh not Canada. Uh well, what it's probably you. you uh, I don't know. I travel so much, Rami, but COVID started. It's been a while now. I can't remember. Past two weeks ago, you asked me to remember a year or so. Uh, I mean, cause because it's the first three months. You, don't you have like at least two to three bookings out, out of the country? Yeah, this I do now. Yeah. That's... Like if they all, like, and I was supposed to go to Poland too, but I pulled out of that one because just the, the alert levels were four, but the alert levels are four on in Romania too. But Romania is on the back end of that, so if something happens, like I could recover if I get stuck out of the country. But like I'll miss all these other bookings if I get stuck out in Poland. If I catch a fever, or I can't get in, and then you gotta pay your own hotel, right? And you're like uh, stuck wherever for I don't know how many weeks before they let you back in. Um, man, I, I'm I'm imagining it was. Uh, I can think of where I was last. Uh, man, you. I used to do I did UK every year, so like it had to be England. It would have been England. Yeah. Didn't didn't you say right before COVID? You were supposed to do was it something in Japan or was it something with Ring of Honor? No, prior to COVID, I was supposed to do a couple uh, New Japan stuff. Yo, that uh, would have been huge. Do the stage tours and uh, some Ring of Honor shows with uh, and uh, that was Marty Scroll that booked me on that and had that lined up. And then COVID happened, but then uh, unfortunately, some other stuff happened with this whole. Uh, uh, whatever it was, like a speak out thing or something. He got caught up in some kind of way, so he wasn't with Ring of Honor anymore. So that all fell to the wayside for me. But um, but it looks like the world's trying to get back to normal, even though the Omicron or whatever, Omaha, what's it called? Omicron, I think. Whatever is back. Uh, you said there's a new variant out now, but um, it's looking like people are eager to get people back overseas. But like, we'll see what happens. Um, Let's see what the middle of this month brings. We still two more. Give it two more weeks in January to figure things out and see where we're at there. So. I mean, the beginning of year, your year is, I mean, taking off. Well, yeah, I'm uh like, this 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 weekend, like uh, CCW. I'll talk about CCW and all the, the tryouts because I gave the wrong dates on the podcast last time. So the tryouts are going to be 29th of, of this month. But uh, uh, this weekend, um, Florida City, uh, Friday. Tomorrow or Friday? What is today? Thursday, Friday, tomorrow. Yeah, Florida City, Florida City, uh, down there at the tap room, I believe it is. Uh, 
CCW. Um, Saturday, Jacksonville. Um, it would, uh, it's a Pope charity type of show. It's an NWA show, uh, and, and uh, I'm wrestling versus or taking on uh, the NWA champion, heavyweight champion, uh, uh, Trevor Murdoch. So, so I got that. And the next weekend, I'm in. Uh, uh, I'm in. Uh, I'm in West Palm somewhere. So I got local shows, West Palm, and then Sundays either. I'm either mixing my Florida City and and and, and Homestead dates up. I don't know which one. I'm either. The vice first this weekend Friday is either Florida City or Homestead, and the next weekend's the opposite, whichever one it is. And then um, uh, I'm there, so so I'm local that weekend, and then uh, the weekend after that I'm up in Pittsburgh, and then uh, the week I don't know the weekend the 29th I'm I'm, I'm home because I'm going to be doing the tryouts for the school, so we'll get the CCW tryout. So the 29th I give all the wrong information, Raymond. So let me square this up right here, get it right, get it out there. I mean. Oh, you're going to do that right now? Yeah, I might as well oh, do it yeah. right now. I'm talking about the 29th summer, <laughs> so I won't remember to get back to it if I don't do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, no. Uh, so, on the 29th of uh, January, this month, uh, the end of this month, um, we're going to have uh, open tryouts for novice people that have not wrestled or, or, or ever trained at another wrestling school or, or facility or center somewhere. Um, it's from 1 to 4. It'll be, I believe it's a Saturday, uh, the 29th, whatever it is, it's the 29th. It's from 1 to 4. And it's seventy five dollars if you go online and register with Coastal Championship Wrestling in advance. And let me let me um and it's a hundred at the door, but let me tell you for the seventy five dollars you're gonna get you're getting a chance of a lifetime. You could go you could come down now to CCW and join the school. That's what you really want to do, right? So you can come down now and probably put you can either pay in full the twenty five hundred dollars, two thousand five hundred, or you could come down and put down like five hundred dollars. And make payments, and it probably comes out to three grand or whatever it may be. You could do that, or you could come on the 29th and, and 29th and spend seventy five dollars, get a tryout, have a chance of earning a free scholarship. You're gonna get a shirt, and you're gonna get three hours in the ring, and you can figure out if you want to be a wrestler or not by these three hours. You're gonna know whether you want to be a part of this or not after that three hours. I can guarantee you that. But if you go down now and you spend all that money, <laughs> you take one class, three hours later, one class, you don't want it, you got all that money out. So I know that they're probably going, hey, man, shut up. Like, you know, this is a good business, man. Quit telling people that. Well, I'm saying, why not seize that opportunity for $75 and come down and find out this is what you really want to do? And then you also get a chance of earning a free scholarship. You may be picked. There'll be a women's scholarship and a men's scholarship. So that's January 29th of this month at the CCW training facility. Um you can find it online. You can check it out. Go to the website. All that kind of good stuff. Coastal Championship Wrestling. I mean, you just breeze over this, but it may not be a big deal to you, or it might be. But I mean, you're you're going to be on NWA. Mm. Not only are you going to be on it, but fighting for the the world champion. Yeah, well, like. I'd be a lot more excited about it and a lot more happier about it if I knew my back was going to hold up. So. Like, you know, I didn't miss, I only missed one weekend of work with this back, but it wasn't uh, TV tapings. Although everything that's taped, uh, everything you do nowadays, every event everywhere ends up on YouTube somewhere. Some version of somebody's version of what they want to call TV or, or live streams or this and this and that. But like, I missed one weekend uh, of shows and I have struggled truly and have been in more pain the last three months than I am now. But my biggest fear, like, now I have a, a fear factor. Like, I use the word fear. I have a fear factor in my head. When I broke my neck and I came back, my first match was with Balls Mahoney after a broken neck. I, I, I took a superplex off the top rope through a pile of chairs in the center of the ring. It, they, they did almost everything that you would not think somebody would do in their first match back, getting dumped on the back of my head, this and that. But I had that F word. I didn't have that F word at all in my vocabulary, fear. Now, now I do fear that like my back has been one of the most painful things that I've, I've dealt with. And it's probably because I've never had to deal with a back injury. Like I went to bed on a Thursday night and woke up just crippled. Like, so, uh, and, and couldn't understand it or anything else and still really don't understand it. The, you know, the doctors could say long-term this, long, the spinal stenosis, that, and blah, blah, blah. But I understand it about as much as getting the stem cell shots and being able to walk fine two days later i don't want, or two weeks later um which is just mesmerizing to me so they both are mesmerizing in different ways one has put fear in me and one has put hope in me now i got fear and hope tearing at each other because i don't want to go back to 
where I was three months ago or one month ago or two months ago, which, so now, now I think one of the biggest things uh, a wrestler can uh, have working against them is that fear. Because once you're afraid you're always going to, that you're going to get hurt or you're worried about getting hurt, that's when you hurt yourself or you hurt somebody else. Yeah, you, know? you, you taught me that. That's, yeah, because, you know. It's true, though. Yeah, if you if you think you can't do something or you're afraid to do something, you're either going to hurt the person trying to do it to you or you're going to hurt yourself or hurt both of you at the same time. So, uh, yeah, I, I got to get that out of my, my head. So, tonight there's class. Thursday night will be there as usual. It's usually open ring on, uh, it's open ring six to nine tonight. At CCW. So I'm going to go down there and against my better judgment, I'm going to try to uh, run a little bit of match tonight with somebody. Just just to see where I'm at. I know that I made it through those three months or the four months with the back injury. But I knew that I was hurt. And I knew that it couldn't get no worse than that unless I was, ended up paralyzed. Uh, but now I, I'm just afraid of going backwards back to where I were. Like, and I go, man, should I just walk away and uh, walk away knowing that I can walk again? And... Uh, be happy with that. So, like, I got so much going on in my head where I thought I had it all figured out. Now I don't have crap figured out. I'm more confused than ever. But I'm going to get in the ring tonight, push it a little bit. Last night, tried to hit the ropes. Uh, it was more my knee last night that bothered me hitting the ropes. That's in your blood, though, taking risks. I mean, that's what you do. Like it, Every night you go into the ring, you take a risk multiple yeah, times. It's kind of like that. So I'm, I feel like it's just instinctively in your blood. I, I don't see you ever just... It's kind of like every uh, I don't see race it. car movie or everything you see. They have that one bad crash, which this wasn't a bad crash. I just went to bed and woke up like this. <laughs> I don't know what happened, you know, but uh, I guess I guess it's a lifetime of crashes. But uh, well, they got to get through that pivotal moment like because they got that fear and hold them back to hold them back to hold them back and then when they get through it it's like ah it's either all good or, or they never get through it so uh well fingers crossed <laughs> hopefully you're right raymond and, Oof. It's, and it's not even like you blindly take the risks you you make the proper adjustments um which is making me boring well, <laughs> like, going but i do know how to put a match together like, going back or, to or that you actually more, yeah. actually mentioned that maybe two weeks ago hopefully you remember you said something about the WWE slowly taking away your offense. Yeah. Um, like because you have the sickest move set. Like I don't know people. I think that's one of the things people always mention when they do mention you: the sickest entrance, the sickest look, and then the sickest move set. But then you said mm-hmm. they they slowly took away a lot of your offense. Yeah, but then they let the uh, Gable guy do them. They're <laughs> doing tiger suplexes again and everything else. Yeah, yeah. They, they took away. Yeah, they they would well. My, my, well, it was a different, like, so all these guys were like, your main event guys are like Taker, Kane, like, you know, the, the bigger guys like this and this and that. Well, they see a guy coming in and grabbing a, a, a tiger, doing tiger suplexes and the bridges and stuff. They're like, they ain't doing that to me. They ain't going to do that to me. Because, you know, they're not, they can't work every night taking moves like that. Plus, their bigger guys would kill their things off. So, uh, and, it was at it was Edge, me and at Edge. We'd wrestle every every, every night. We'd come in from a house show, and they'd go, "All right, that was great, but uh, you need to tune this down here, and you need to take these out, take this out." And they were eliminating his his move sets as well. Some of the stuff like the electric chairs and different that because for one, we were we were like second match on the card or third match in the card or maybe even first, but. Uh, it was not the generation of yet where like they go every match, go out there and kill it. Make, you know, uh, it was more like the card built to the main event, uh-huh. right? So if you're doing all this, what, <laughs> what you leave it for the main event at night, you know? Although every person, if they're in the main event, should be able to carry themselves in their own weight, in their own style and way that, that it wouldn't matter what the earlier card does. It shouldn't. But uh, um, nowadays you watch AEW and they start up with a a circus act of an eight man, you know, <laughs> they're all flipping and flopping. And it, it, it is proved that it, when it tapers down to you get to like the Jericho's or, or somebody to go work, it's like, you'll, you'll still hold interest in it. You know, it's not, is it is my taste of what, what things should be? No, I like, I like how a show, a show builds and everything, but you gotta keep people's tensions nowadays right out the gate. So, uh, but how shows should build that way. So they were eliminating different things. For one, they knew the older guys. They're they're not going to take it. Two, were taken away from from the main events and stuff like that. Three, they had to keep you humble and stuff, and uh, and also protect Edge for a longer run so he didn't get destroyed. But 
But within, within all that, you do learn how to work, yes, Raymond, a certain style and, and be able to get by on uh, character, character-driven stuff. And, and I, I did way too much stuff anyways for a lot of my things. And, and uh, you're right, I probably think so? probably find a niche. Well, no, too many like unnecessary. I, I bump every night on the floor. Everybody tells me you're crazy for that. But I've been doing that since I was 17. So I'm 52 now. I don't imagine I'm gonna, it's going to change any. Even with my bad bat, the back being out and everything, every night I was bumping on the floor still. Every match I had every weekend, I was still bumping on the floor. Um, so, uh, but, but but the styles of my matches changed. It was more, um, instead of me trying to run toe-to-toe or do a lot of the other stuff, I, I would stay more centered in the ring while the other person worked around me, under me, and up and down, and I would do more catching and stuff like that instead of... Instead of me fighting from underneath and hitting the ropes and getting chopped down, I would have them do something and duck, duck, and I'd chop them down. You know, so I changed it up a little bit, not too much, but 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 enough, enough to get by and survive. It's a first. I was afraid. I was petrified. Of <laughs> course, yeah. No kid could dad to help me sing. You're gonna sing on the other end. I can't. I can rap. No, you can't. You right. uh, I'm, you're, no, you're right. I, no, you're go right. ahead. Let's no, you're right. You're right. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see. Well, you never said this before, so no, I was joking. Yeah. I could recite something. I think that's what you you recite. You don't even freestyle. You, you, you common now? Common. That's you don't know who common is? Yeah, that's the ball headed guy. A boring ball guy. He boring, dude. You can't be boring and bald. At least Stone Cold The Rock, the most exciting I'm talking people. about rap. I'm talking about that. I know, about but that. you can't be. He's a, a poet. You can't be a bald headed boring person. Man, you got so much heat. And he's a good actor. You got a lot of heat, man. Look, oh, yeah. You nah. just got a lot of heat with the whole world out there. Everybody <laughs> knows common. You just got heat with him. I don't think no one knows. Yeah, they do. Everybody knows. They probably talking, probably t- think you're talking about somebody in common. The word common in general. But guys, he's a rapper. If you don't know him, I'll put a picture up next to Gang Grill for the, everyone that does not know him, which is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, joking. Man, he's so talented. You're twisted, dude. Nice. The next thing you know, you can say you don't know Exhibit. Yeah, the pin my right. <laughs> huh? The pin my right host, right? Nobody's a rapper too. <laughs> it's not none of this stuff like I killed I think, an armadillo from my fella. Like whatever, I think like, the world, um, I think the world addresses people by their most mm, uh, right. popular career. Listen, let's just move on from this. Like, well, we can move on to Edge I, since we're talking about him. Edge, yeah. Uh, oh, you predicted this. Like this guy is a. What I is, predicted it. What is this little ball thing? Crystal ball. Everything yeah. you say, I may put together a reel with all the stuff you, the, the future you predict. You predicted the Beth Phoenix coming up to the ro- to the main mm-hmm. roster, doing some work with him and the Miz. Well, that was because you, you you seen her like pull off of NXT all of a sudden. So I mean, you know, you just read between the lines and all that. And is it really prediction or an observation? In this day and age, <laughs> in this day and age, it's a prediction because people don't really, <laughs> people don't really. And there, Royal Rumble. I mean, I, I'm liking the card so far for uh, Royal Rumble. Are you familiar with? It? We're finally, hard, no, no, no. We're finally getting Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw Brock Lesnar on the thing, I, and I and I watched um, a little late on watching, but I watched they opened Raw up, and and I liked how he came out there, Brock Lesnar, and uh, threw the the stairs in the ring and created his own like uh, like mountain for say like the Olympics or whatever, his own podium, like to stand up there with the belt and uh, and, and uh, Heyman. Uh, Heyman with a <laughs> crafty promo uh, because he's still Paul Heyman, but yet kind of baby face, a lot of clever wording. I, I don't like him so much, but his promos are very clever, uh, very well spoken, and uh, it was good. I liked that whole whole segment and how they built up Big E and then just to say, well, you know, we're going to beat him anyway, so whatever, he's going to lose. But whatever, I, I thought it was a great opening segment. What would you think? I mean, I you think, didn't watch it, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say about the Paul Heyman is, I think he, he, it's so easy for him to play that role because is that really him? Does is that well? You know him better yeah, than I I'd do. I'd say he's a lot more shadier than that, but like, <laughs> he's a lot more wheezier than the role. He was played. literally <laughs> just that's a that's a nice version of him. Like it's a nice version. He's a lot more slimier than that. Not only is he with the whole another wrestler, he's on a whole another brand. He just switches so easily, but he's the same guy. He wore baby faces. Yeah, and he made a How joke he to that? like he made a comment that without his management or whatever, uh, Roman Reigns in one week has even gotten COVID now. <laughs> like, wow! Like, like he he prevented him 
from catching COVID this whole time. But now that he's not under his management or anything, he, he's come up with COVID, which was like, in, I don't know, it was insanely uh, genius or just like do you think bad taste. I don't know. I don't know which way that it would have went 50 50 with me with the way the world's in a panic about this. Do you COVID think um, Brock Lesnar is capable of catching COVID? You think I'm cap- capable of it? No, of course not. I think you're uh, a walking vaccine. Yeah, so yeah. Brock Lesnar probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I, I kind of like how even though I, I like the smiling Brock Lesnar though. I like all the yeah. smiling and and uh, the little bit of talking he's doing. That's like not yelling or anything like that. So no, that's cool. Um, is he capable? Of ca- COVID? I think <laughs> yes. I think we're all capable of catching COVID. Are are we uh, asymptomatic or? or Whatever that's the case is, I don't think he he will get sick from COVID, but I think he <laughs> he could carry COVID. I think we all could carry COVID, but do we all get sick from it? No, I don't believe myself or or Brock Lesnar would get sick from COVID. <laughs> hey, is this another prediction? Not a prediction, but the belt, the belt, the belt. It's uh, we. I mean, we're ignoring the fact he's a WWE champion now, a big guy, a big like. It's, not not Ryback. He's the big guy. Uh, big guy Ryback. No, I don't yeah, think you should talk about him on here. <laughs> oh, you don't like Ryback? No, it's not that I don't like him, but he attacks anyone that talks about him on Twitter. Well, I just defended him. I, I said, he's the big guy. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, just, I'm afraid of people with Twitter fingers. So I just don't. Oh, want, my goodness. Don't want any. You're going to get attacked. Just, if you want to find Raymond, just go to the <laughs> no, show The Trap. That's not my name. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, he's got another alias or something. Uh, yeah. DJ Rays or something. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> like, what it is. All right. So what, what, what prediction am I predicting? What no, I'm predicting? just saying. Like, a, a, the championship on another big guy. Because you don't. Okay. Well, the, I told you everything's going big. Yeah. Then you saw they let everybody go. That that's like smaller. A lot of the guys. I mean, speaking of a champ, uh, Braun Broker is that his name from NXT? He just won the NXT Championship. Uh, he's a big guy. Is he? Okay. Um, I, I think he's that. um he's ex- I think he's related to a Steiner. If I'm not. Mistaken. Oh, Scott Steiner, uh, uh, Rick Steiner's son. Is a, oh, did I'm, they put the belt on him already? Yeah. Oh wow. That's so fast. Like, he just debuted like a month ago, right? It's like the big guys. Yeah. This is exactly what you're saying. I mean, well, he's got a name. He's probably got that aggression. I didn't see it. I, I've only seen his power slam or something, a clip or something one time. Yeah, it's uh, very it's, uh, cool. Uh, no, of- uh, well, so I, I didn't see who won the. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I had to leave to come here. I did, so I didn't see the uh, who won the four way on Raw, the uh, fatal four way to to face. Uh, Brock Lesnar uh, uh, at Royal Rumble. Who's facing him? Oh, Bobby Lashley. Oh, Bobby got it? Oh, Bobby Lashley. I mean, that match was... I feel like that match was... I want to see it, but I just wish it was built up more. I, that, well, I'll admit that... that I does, feel like... That doesn't mean it's going to be a clean finish or anything determined there. It'll probably carry over. You know how they built up this whole Roman and Brock? I, I, I wanted that type of conflict because we get, what, three weeks of... MVP and Paul Heyman and then brought, like I wanted to see a couple weeks of months of that build up. I don't want to see it so soon, bro. That's oh, gold right there. Paul Heyman even said, uh, "MVP, let's talk about MVP." No, let's not talk about MVP. <laughs> let's <laughs> talk it's about it. let's get Bobby Lashley. All right, anybody put Big E over? Put Big E over. I think you did. You you put MVP over recently. I forgot for what, but who you think is? I think that's the better. Better manager, I think. Yeah, no, no, no. So he's you think a, he can go toe to toe with Paul Heyman on the mic? Yeah, he's he's educated, he's well well versed, and um, Paul Heyman is crafty. <laughs> he's, he spent a lifetime of being a snake, so he's naturally uh, slippery. But uh, MVP is South Florida boy, three hundred five. True, he's come True. up. He's 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 done time, and he's done time. <laughs> you know, and hard time and, and good time, and and he know he knows the block, so he knows the shady character when he sees it. But he knows how to he knows how to survive and, and co mingle with them too. So and to also end up where he needs to be on top. So yeah, I'll I'm, say he could. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm, I don't know. I'm just right now WWE. Their um the, the programming is pretty nice. I want to know what SmackDown's gonna do now with. Man, I never, I never seem to watch SmackDown at all. Yeah, everything shifted to Ross. I, I don't think I have SmackDown on my recording. I have AEW, but I don't think I have. Did, did they have a? Did, was it? Do they do this all the time, or is this the first time I noticed it, or is it, 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 or is this the first time it happened? I'm watching Raw, and they have an AEW Dynamite commercial on it 
for the oh, debut wow. of Dynamite. Yeah, I was it watching did. it on my, I had it on my DVR. I'm watching it, whatever it's called, when you record it. So I was watching it this morning, and in between the Brock Lesnar segment, which is the opening segment, and then the Bro Riddle segment that came out in the tag against the Otis and whatever, uh-huh. Otis and Gable. There was an AEW Dynamite like debut commercial TBS or something like that. On. Like, so did so they buy like sponsorship? It, Am I crazy? Did anybody else notice that? Or I it, didn't. Uh, well, I didn't see it, but it didn't make the paper. I'm pretty sure you read that stuff. You read. Remember, sometime a lot of the commercials were local, and it might have been something local. But at the same time, I don't think Vince cares. He's the type that if you're spending money on him, I don't think he he cares because if you're a wrestling fan, you know AEW exists. Speaking of Vince and. Caring oh, and taking over NXT and it, letting uh, what Regal go, uh, Road Dog, a Road days. Dog, uh, a couple other names, right? Oh, uh, oh, uh, Ryan Katz was, the was an office guy, which was he had a lot of great ideas. Like, wish he can get him a CCW uh, down there, that'd be good. But uh, uh, there was this whole other thing that that. I just gotten back to the gym because of the stem cell, so I'm in the gym a little bit more, so I'm able to do like uh, 40 and 50 minutes of cardio. So, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't watching wrestling shows, but uh, listening to some of the uh, columnists' uh, reports and stuff. We'll call them columnists or something like that, or reporters, or wrestling reporters. Uh, Tony Storm and and the controversy around Tony Storm, whether she left. Or they let oh. her go. And then I, I didn't realize that, like, when she came up to the main roster the first time, they dro- dropped her off the roster and said she had to lose, like, 20, 25 pounds. So then she lost the weight. Then they brought her back up to the main roster, and then they just kind of clown assed her with uh, pies in the face with Charlotte and all that stuff and then all that. So uh, and then apparently, I guess she asked for a release because she didn't think it was going anywhere. You hear anything on that? I seen her about being released. I didn't get that deep into to things. I know mm-hmm. Jeff Hardy thing. Um, they were planning something with him to be the shaman on NXT. Mm-hmm. I don't. Is that a? I'm not too familiar with that character. Is that a character of his? The shaman. I don't even know what a shaman is besides some kind of like witch doctor or healing guy. Well, he was apparently there. supposed to do something well, like that. And I'm not offending you witch doctors if <laughs> you're not shamans, and I'm not offending the shaman. Like, I don't know what it is. I think a shaman's like a. Practice magic or some type of like, was spiritual like, or like a native uh, shaman, like a magic man, isn't it? Yeah. Or a healer, a healer. Well, they were going to do something like that with him on NXT. And people are now, you know, the rumors are starting. I'm not a con- conspiracy theorist, but with the whole release of him and XYZ, it was something to do with, I guess, him not wanting to go back down to NXT or not back down, but. Mm. I I don't know. It's uh, this generation, like, and people can argue this with Tony Storm. Why would you walk away if you're making money? But like, if your feelings are, if you feel like you did everything they asked you, and then they just go out there and you're putting pies at people's faces, you can get frustrated. But at the same time, uh, it's a whole different generation. Like, like I think my generation, we all worked hard, but we kind of just it was about like paying our bills and, and getting ahead and taking care of our families where I don't know if this generation cares as much about that as they care about being pushed, you know, like, um, you know, uh, being on top and being used in a, this way and this way is even maybe more so than, than getting paid, you know, mm-hmm. like we're like me when it really came down to it. I mean, they let me go. They let me go. But I didn't argue much anything because I was just grateful to be to making enough money to buy a house and do the right things and be able to give my kids a Christmas mm-hmm. without stress that on my end, you know, we never let them stress, but you know, it's just, um, so I- they're such a different generation. I don't know. Like, like I think, if I was uh, Tony storm back then, would I stay like, it's hard to say this generation. I know Tony storm personally. I haven't talked to her in a while, but I was with her in the UK. Like I, I believe she was from um, Australia and her grandparents lived in, like Birkenhead and, and uh, like just outside Liverpool or Liverpool area. And and the way thing might have been to the fact that she was a power lifter. She likes to power lift a lot. She trained right. in a gym with a guy named Lars, I know. Do you, think, guy, um, guy. do you think it's do you think it's people mixing uh, business with feelings? 
Like they don't understand. Well, yeah, of course they're they're, 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 they're all about feelings and <laughs> like some are about business because WWE they show you time and time again that it's business over everything. Well, it's business, but you can get pies in your face one day and be the women's champ. That's what I'm saying. Like I think they they get too um, wrapped up into. Well, that's why I said, is it just generation? Is it's it this just, generation? Like at the end of the day, it's. Business. I'm not knocking it if that's what yeah. your deal is. That's what your deal is. You know, we're here a short time, not a long time in life. But with all these new medicines and the stem cell, right, stem, places like integrated pain management, we might be here longer than we think, and we can do things longer than we think. So you might want to reassess things. You know, I don't know. I mean, hey, hey, it might be because they think the grass is greener on the other side. I told you before, Raymond. The only reason the grass is greener on the other side because it takes more bullshit to fertilize it. So, <laughs> so that is the only reason grass is greener on the other side. But I get where you're going with this. You're trying to uh, that uh, you send me some crazy crap, uh, CM Punk referencing like uh, you think the grass is green on the other side. Get a four for one, buy one free, <laughs> four pay. for four from Wendy's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like the five for five pack. I, I, I don't know, man. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I personally don't get. Taking cheap shots at the uh, other company, I I would like focus on my brand. And, and if it was me, I'm not me. I'm not a millionaire, billionaire, or a zillionaire, or even a thousandaire. You know, I'm just it's just, it's just it's just me, gang girl, like the vampire warrior, David, David, <laughs> whatever you want to call me, David. I I don't I don't even I don't know. I think I know. I, what it I is. don't know if I would want to entitle, empower, give them empowerment to even acknowledge. The, anything the other company has done, this and that, even if it was a knock, why? I don't it's, get that. I don't understand. I get that. it. I understand it. It's a, they're there to entertain their fans and it's a cheap pop. They know it's not, they know, I think CM Punk knows the WWE can't. He's better than that though. They can't shoot shots at AEW when he knows that. And, and the, they're going to beat them every week in ratings. The WWE is going to beat them every week in ratings. The only way they can, I guess, to the public beat them is to take shots, knowing that they can't take shots. Does that beat shots them back. or does that cheapen them? It, it gives them that cheap pop from the crowd, like "Oh snap!" And now that's that's the high they need, but it's not gonna care. it's not gonna make the ratings more. Well, if it's not I mean, the ratings, what crowd is it popping? <laughs> like that, that the select eight, few, yeah, right? exactly. But, I mean, if which, but I think they could build it if, and I really do. The AEW could build, but I don't know, wouldn't worry about that over there competing. I would just like get all my ducks in a row and just really build my house within and concentrate on building a really excellent brand mm. and without worrying about or putting over or attacking any other company. But not, but it, whatever, I don't work for either company. so I, It's I not mean, to put you over, but I mean, if you look at the people they put in the position of power, like the presidents with Cody and everything, mm-hmm. yeah, they're very, they're good assets to the company, but you would want someone that was around a little bit longer to see mm-hmm. what, it, what it's like to build a company, like having you as a president or having someone that's actually... Built or been around a so company. Did you watch? Did you watch AEW? Any? This Do past? I watch? No, I see the clips. See the clips. You see the clips of Brandy Rhodes and Dan. Oh uh, man! So you might be a black belt, but I'm a black bitch. Bro, she said. cringe. <laughs> it was. <laughs> like, but so, what's your thoughts on that? Like to me, it's like as a, as. It, yeah, I'm about to tell you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the the only time you you put a plight to anything black is. And you reference it in that way. It's like I'll see if just for a case anybody's wondering, Raymond's a strong young black gentleman here. Yeah. So, like, I think that's what people think, but some people say I look like Justin Bieber. But what? I mean, I've heard it a few times. But maybe it's the way you dress with those funny pants you call uh, joggers yeah. and shorts over. He's a jogger. <laughs> but but go I on. mean, go it, on. you use this stereotypical thing about black females, and it's like okay. It's hard. You mean to, like pulling the earrings off and throwing the shoes? Yeah, off. it's like okay. If this, yeah, show, you're, you're a big like world star hip hop guy, right? You watch all that. Right? It was just it's out of big, place. Out of place. Okay. It was out of place for her because she, she never carries herself like this stereotypical black girl. That I don't ever picture to be. her like that. No. Exactly. That's why it's. Like, I, I don't know her that well, but I don't picture her. I've never now, gotten that impression. If, if Bianca know. Belair did it, I would still say okay. Ooh, the, Bianca strong. I, I could see that from her because it's like okay, <laughs> but. Cause she, she got car- thick muscles. It's bro. Ooh. She wears the the black the black power yeah. stuff. She's all about that. But then the only time you kind of make light of it is when you want to. Um, I guess some females may take this the wrong way. I mean, a lot of black females. It's like the the only time you're giving us a light is is this. How can I say this? I I, I give you the stereotypical black woman. She basically gave that to millions of eighty percent of cooking. 
I don't want to be racist, but it's a Caucasian audience. It's wrestling, which is not nothing wrong with that. But it's like the, stereo, the stereotype that they already think of you, you just put on a freaking forefront and you just gave them that thing to cheer on. It's like, hey, I'm not racist. They did it. Like you give them that key to, mm. to enjoy that type of display of a black woman. Hmm. So like I was on a plane one time flying. Okay, and it, like this, like it, I was in first class, and, and I was sitting le- next to the uh, uh, an, an older black lady, uh, dressed very nice. She had uh, like uh, like traditional like headdress on, like you know, like yeah. like like um, cultural, that, like a dashiki or something. Well, yeah, like nice hair wrap, like but I know what you like mean. like I want to say like African. I don't know which which but thing, but cultural, very like very yeah. nice though. Everything just very very nice. And I'm talking to her, and she she, she even gave me her number and everything, even after my stupid <laughs> remarks. What did, like, you say? Like, what did you say? Yeah, but so no no no, I just said you know I'm WT Whiskey Tango. She goes, what's that? I go white trash, and she goes. Why would you say that about yourself? Why would you give the whole world? Why would you go and empower? You say that about yourself. You just open it up for everybody to say that. Do you think that is good? Do you think you're white trash? Are you are you really that bad? That you, why are you saying that out loud? Why are you putting that out there? You know, you just she goes. Don't, that's just silly and, and ignorant. <laughs> you know. And I said, oh. You know, I, didn't, I haven't said it very much since then. Once in a while, I still do, but then I still think of that. Her telling me that, and I'm looking at her, and then, then she still gave me her phone number, and she said, "Well, anytime you want to go around." This is a while back, though, but uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I think, like, is that what you're trying to say? Like, you're putting something what people are neg- in their head. It's a negative, like, yeah. stereotypical thing, and then you're just giving it to them. You know? But yeah. so you, or she, so she thinks that's what they want to see. Is that what you're saying? Of or course, what? they they. It, she got the pop she wanted. Oh, you're a black belt, or I'm a black. What? Well, yeah, but we see this in movies all the time. How's it anything different from acting, or, or like? It's not different movies like white chicks where they stereotype white like <laughs> chicks. You know, like you know what, what I mean. Bro. How's it any different? I mean, how can you can you blame her, or is that just scripted? Or I mean, if you listen to other like, uh, who is it like? Uh, is it Jim Cornette or somebody? Did they say oh, it was just another way to get get her on TV to be on TV for no reason? Why is she gonna come out there? Could she even really beat this guy? <laughs> like, like, I just feel like she didn't have because he owns an MMA team. You know them. You know. I just felt like they were building even her as okay. a person to person. She was building herself up to be uh, well enough negative on her. Like I mean, she was just who knows? We, no, that's we, what I'm saying. Who she... really knows? I, I I don't know. But what about him? Didn't he get some like uh, negative feedback that he was uh, m- what's the word misogynistic? <laughs> What does that mean? Like something against women because he goes, you only brand you're the first brandy I met that wasn't a stripper and oh, yada, yada yada and stuff like that. <laughs> like so, he got some uh, feed. He got some negative feedback on that too. Like so, I, I mean, the point. You think this whole that whole segment was even necessary? Like because like then Dustin came out, not Cody, and then I I, I don't even know. I, I mean, at the same time, it's, it's wrestling and it's controversy. So okay, it's it's wrestling, it's controversy. controversy, it's entertainment. So she did what she did for controversy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's supposed <laughs> to do what it just made me do. But it's like I'm not gonna stop watching it or like her less. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't think anything about any of it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't I take did. it in a negative way. I think, any any other way, it's just like oh, okay. It's just yeah. uh, another segment trying to get a pop. That's yeah. all I look at. So. I think that's what everyone said in the comments. Just cringe where it's not like i'm embarrassed for me it's kind of just i kind of felt would like, they cringe 20 years ago depending on who said it mm. they not, i could tell you if you take a wrestling show from 20 years ago but <laughs> there'd be oh. so many people <laughs> and, 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 and put uh <laughs> cyber jail <laughs> and everything else canceled and everything else because the stuff they would say in wrestling black or white either either on both ends towards each other was I mean, like look, i was like <laughs> even back then i would watch it and go Man, that's not cool. I, I, where I grew up, that wouldn't be going down. You know, so, <laughs> like, it's funny because it's you know Vince McMahon had this whole era where he did the the do rag and he did the what's up, my nigga. Like oh my goodness, and, and that so didn't man. even offend me. It was just hilarious. So I guess it's just how, who does it and how good it is when it's done. Don't think it'll work now. 
It would for me. It would be funny. For you. <laughs> the population of one over here. Um, All yeah. right. Move on before you bury it. Before this whole show gets canceled because you decided to come on here and go. Hey, Kid Cadet, where are you? This isn't live, so we could check. Ah, it don't matter. It's all good. This is what shows are for, man. You got to get out here and talk. You don't need to cut it. So if you hear me saying this, I mean, I'm going to make him cut all this. He's going to cut, 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 cut. No, he's not going to cut because it's not that bad. I mean, it's just bad. an opinion. Your opinion, right? I mean, that's opinion. My notes, my integrated pain management. For some reason in the world, I can't not say that word for some. But again, look at that shameless like uh, goldenpalace.com plug. I just gonna get on it. But no, I'm swearing by that, dude. AJ and his family, man, they tremendously helped me there. So what else are we missing, Raymond? Do, are we doing Pandora's box or anything like that today? No, we're bad. We're actually, this we actually kill time. This was, <laughs> I mean. Well, you are game. So, what else is in like? So, Brock Lesnar, or, like, so let's talk. Uh, uh, a lot of people have said, "Hey, Gangrel, or whatever, Vampire David, or whatever my name is." Um, have you seen? Um, did you see the Brood Bath again and oh, Edge right, coming edge. out and everything? Like you and you were just saying, "Did I predict the Beth Phoenix thing?" Um, yes, I saw it. I uh, uh, saw the match with him and Miz and all that. Uh, I think that, that that when he did it on the 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 first time, it was a bigger pop. It wasn't expected and stuff with the music, and then I think I think it, it starts wearing thin. Like like I think you said earlier, it should be a really special moments. But I mean, I guess they're building to a pay review and they're building things, and you know, the Miz and Maurice's marriage. But we already talked about that last time, right? The Bruce yeah. Beth and all that, yeah. But then they Briefly. came out and they had the match. But it was good to see Beth Phoenix come out. So anybody that was asking me there, I'm always happy to see Adam um, get out there and do the thing. And I'm glad before his career uh, over in the ring that he gets to, uh, which it was the final nail in my coffin. So hopefully it's not the final nail in your coffin. Perform with your wife, somebody you love. Uh, and go out there and do it on TV together as a team. So that's pretty cool. So I think that's cool in a sense. Um I don't know where it fit on the show and stuff like that. Uh, personally, watching wrestling, you know, it seemed like a little square peg, round hole type of thing. But I think she looked awesome. I think she, uh, her hair looked great. She looked like, you know, she came out of the show Vikings that he's on. And uh, But I'm very happy that they get to do something together uh, before, you know, if he retires or whatever happens, before they wrap wraps up his, his career. So that's kind of cool to always be able to go out there with somebody you love and do your thing with your wife and stuff like that on national TV. So congratulations and uh, yeah, they're they're on the card for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, mixed tag. Oh uh, yeah, mixed tag. Yeah. Who do you? So, who do you? Cool. Okay, who do you think is gonna go over? And I'm gonna ask this, even though I know the answer. Who do you want to go over? Dun dun. <clears throat> who do you think is gonna go over? I uh, I would I would. Uh, I'd put Miz and Maurice over, but but why? Uh, why? Because I think Edge is done. <laughs> like you know, like how much more years are you gonna do? Right? But but you know, I, I guess I guess technically, if I look at it, Miz can always bounce back. He's gonna have the time to build this stuff. Maybe Edge is on his way out. So Edge Edge over. Do I want who do I want over Edge over? So both. Both. Think- but but I mean, because only because I had to sit there and think for a second. I'm like, hold on, Miz can. He's got so much other stuff. He's got. He's got their shows, this and that. They can always bounce back, and they're heel. Heels can lose every night of the week. Even though a lot of wrestling now, I don't know if it's WWF things like that, but AEW is no heel, no face. It's who people like. But I think WWE is more uh, WWF, <laughs> the band word. WWE, uh, they still have faces and heels and stuff like that. So uh, definitely Miz can always bounce back. He's, he's super talented, too. I just wish, but that's just me just wishing as a, as a fan. You know how um, the first time he brought out the Brood Edge? It was because he was supposed to dig deep into this dark, dark place. Side, yeah, yeah. I felt like The Miz should have did something to Beth, Beth Phoenix. This would have been some crazy well, booking. it ain't over yet. Who knows? Yeah, this would have been crazy booking. The Miz just shows up on NXT. Now you're cross Brandon, and he attacks. What's her name? He uh, Beth Phoenix. So a man is just gonna go attack with, with the wife. Like he he kind of holds the guys back, and he let, he sets it up. He sets it up to where is Maurice even ready for that? Because she looked a little out of out of place during the whole match. That, like when she was like valet. That would have helped. And I'm not disrespecting her. I'm just saying like she looked very out of place. Like I mean, didn't I think they just had another child? If I'm not mistaken, maybe. But that doesn't change whether you look out of place or not, and your facial expressions and your movements. Like look, she looked very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. 
But I think that would have been really good booking. And then him doing something to Beth, Beth Phoenix to make him dig into that dark place. You know, metal made more sense. It would have been mm. more entertaining. Like, so maybe she goes dark. Oh, that would have been. Oh, yeah. she could have been in Scarlet. Edge wow. And Scar- I don't know. Is Scarlet still there? No, but I mean, the, how Karen Cross would come out with her Edge. Oh, you mean Scarlet? Uh, like, and Edge could have came. I was came- mixing up the other one. Uh, no, no, no. The yeah. other one with the pigtails, Holly did. <laughs> uh, not Holly. Uh, what was it? Yeah. All right, so. Uh, so what do we got going on? So Royal Rumbles, what January twenty ninth? Yeah, we got We got the CCW tryouts January twenty ninth. Do you have any Royal Rumble predictions, Raymond? Yes. What? Look, WWE loves dipping back into the to the bucket, and Drew McIntyre deserves another WrestleMania moment. I think Drew McIntyre is going to win the Royal Rumble. Okay, so Drew McIntyre to win. Who are you surprised? Uh, you know how they always bring older guys in. Do you have any predictions there? I think. Oh, look! Check this out. I think they're gonna bring back a a released superstar. Who? I don't know. That's so vague. No, no, no! It's not I vague. Look, like, I could have I could have named the old veteran or something, but they are gonna bring back someone. We were upset that they released. They re-signed them without us knowing, and it's gonna be a double pop, like, like Bray oh. Wyatt or something. I feel like he. Well, but AEW is saying they got an, a big a announcement, surprise, a surprise signing coming up too, right? Or I think their surprise signing is from. New Japan. New Japan? Okay. I think it's Okada, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm going to be honest. I have no predictions and no nothing on nothing for AEW signing or the <laughs> Royal Rumble. <laughs> like, uh, 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 what's, uh, well, before we go, the, before we sign up, go off to uh, the winners of the uh, contest. The giveaway. Yeah. Uh, the giveaway. Um, was there, I, I didn't watch all of Raw, but was there a thing where, uh, a, wasn't AJ supposed to wrestle uh, the big dude? I, I don't know. If, I know they had an altercation, but I'm not sure if they fought in a match. I think it's a build up to maybe. Oh, okay, but well, I thought they were supposed to have a match, but it didn't happen. Or well, maybe that's maybe I'm mixing some things up there. But oh, yeah, but I mean, speaking of that, do you think that's broken up too soon? Or yeah, yeah, I, well, don't, I don't think he's ready for uh, singles. Um, like Anna would joke that he looked like when he was selling when he first came out. She'd be like, "Is, is there bees around his head?" Because he'd be doing like this when he would sell stuff. You know, he's just trying to. But I've met him. He's a super nice guy, and. um no, I, I think um, I, I think tags, AJ can kind of control a tag and everything, but like to go into singles is is a lot. But um, why does it always have to be cliche though? You turn on your partner. What? How come they can't they can't separate another way without him turning on him? I'm surprised you didn't pull the race car because the black. And oh white no, I mean like you're like today you seem to be on the edge of everything. No, no, no. I'm just saying like once you're when you're that big, it cancels out your race. Okay. Is it everyone? <laughs> Whatever. Because <laughs> the people just talk about your height. It's like, it's not even, oh, look at the black guy. It's like, look at that big guy. He is big. He is a Some big people dude. may you say his hands may put his, yeah. his hands like Andre. Like, so yeah. it just cancels out his race. Well, I don't know if it's like Andre, but he's big. He's super big. Uh, the Undertaker. You think you can bring the great Kali back? No. Who? who? No. I believe Kali's on that Dubai tour. No. I, I didn't know he did not know English. Who? Great Kali. <laughs> I, was at Wrestle- I was at WrestleMania this year. Didn't they? Uh, I don't. I don't know. He was the How does he of, not know English? He doesn't know any English. Look, he was he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. and the, the cameras might not have showed it, but I was. I had some of the pretty nice seats. Every time they called a name, you know, they call your name. You step up to the star on right. WrestleMania. He stepped up every time, and they had because he didn't know. I, I I don't know. Every time they would announce one of the wrestlers to step up, he would step up, look around, and then go back. It's like. You're not talking step up revolution. You're talking about he would go to step up. Oh, I mean he could. <laughs> well, how do you know that he just didn't have to fart or poop or something? <laughs> Bubble gut. Yeah, he was adjusting. See, you know, you can see the confusion in his face. He always looks confused. He's, <laughs> he's big. He's from like. Oh, that doesn't yeah. mean he can't speak English. He just probably couldn't hear. Oh, oh I heard it, but okay. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Me neither, but I mean, I like I've met guy. him a couple times and he said hello, but I guess that doesn't determine. Maybe I've just never liked him because they used The Undertaker to get him over when he first started. He just destroyed The Undertaker in his debut. Oh, you didn't like him in The Longest Yard? No. <laughs> all right raven let's let's move on to these uh let's move on to the giveaway things because we're a little behind i know we were supposed to announce it on uh christmas i believe i don't know if you contacted anybody through via email or they stuff like emails. that but um me. so we'll get them and then uh either this week or next week we'll get out all their uh uh stuff to them i didn't bring the eight by tens with me today but 
Still got to do some cameos and whatnot, so. All right, so uh, here we go. I got the uh, list of uh, the one, two, three, four, five. That's right, the five Christmas giveaways for liking and subscribing to FNB with Gangrel. Fang and with Gangrel. Now, I'm, I recognize a couple of these names on here, and I had nothing to do with uh, pulling these names or what random selection uh, Raymond came up with. But um, congratulations to Zachary Byte. I hope I pronounced that right. B-I-E-T-H. Um, you're wearing a cameo on 8x10. Alex Beckham Jarvis, congratulations to you. Uh, a personal message cameo at uh, 8x10. Uh, Maria Hernandez, and I think I know Maria from the West Coast. If, if, if that is you, uh, happy belated birthday and hello to Tony and everybody. But uh, you've also won a uh, 8x10 and a personal message from myself, video message. And Yesenia Nunez, of course, Yesenia had Yesenia slide in there. Um, she clearly uh, just keeps trying to edge Susan out to be my number one fan. But um, congratulations to you for a personal message and eight by ten. Oh, her email even says gang girl fan. How sweet, Yesenia. And then the the winner of uh, the the signed comic eight by ten, yada yada yada, and all the same stuff. Frank Bungle, <laughs> Franco Pazia. Pazzi, 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 Frank. Well, Frank Bungo, as we all know him here on the show, is there's a lot of questions in the uh, uh, the YouTube section or whatever, or the message section sent in. So congratulations to you all. Um, I'll be doing a, um, I'm going to look up here now. I'm just blinded by a computer. Uh, so we'll be trying to get those out. I'll probably try to do the personal message, the video message, as I'm signing the thing so you can see that I actually signed it and all that. And then we'll get it out to the mail to you real soon. So thank you and congratulations. And I believe on that note, Raymond, we're going to go ahead and wrap up uh, episode 31. 31. One of my favorite numbers, 31. So uh, I hope everybody's having. Welcome to the new year, 2022. Uh, new listeners, welcome to Fang and the Bang with Gang Grow. We usually have Kick that here, but she, we've talked about that earlier in this episode. Yeah, she was off uh, doing some stuff, some publicity stuff for her show and stuff like that. So, uh, hopefully we'll see her back here next week for episode 32. But again, thank you for tuning in and watching or listening or both to Fang and the Bang with Gang Grell. Want some? She'd be over there. She did some. There, yeah, fat some. enough. Take some. All right. Thank you. Keep banging and banging. Ah.